a little nasty, I can see. Oh. Welcome to Flow of Attila, the fourth one. Again, I just want to thank you for all the questions and uh, the nice feedbacks that I've been getting for making these new videos. I would still encourage you that if you have questions to me, just make sure that you put them in the comment section down below in this video. So without further talk, let's see what I captured this few days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Ask me anything in this series. I'm answering to your beautiful questions. I don't know about the audio, but you could probably hear the chainsaw and all that. One of the prices of living in the countryside. It's beautiful, but sometimes it can get noisy. From Guile Hermeng 4334. Hi Attila, I wanted to ask you something. When Dimec played This Love live after the chorus, when he switched to the clean guitar, the F, the, what is that? Uh, Sharp <laughs> power chord continued to sound even with Dime playing the clean part. How did he do it live? Well, let me just show what part I'm talking about. The distortion just fades out and it's clean. My guess is that the Randall and I think the Warhead heads, they can run both the clean channel and the distorted channel simultaneously. My guess is that Grady was gradually turning off the volume on the distorted channel. And it's a pretty cool thing, I, I always love this. Cool that you pointed it out. Okay, okay, so I reached out to Grady and that's the answer I got. Hey Ati, so yes, what I did in the beginning of the song was to turn off three heads that didn't have mic cabs. I left the two mic dirty heads and the clean. When it became time for the fade out, I would engage both channels and fade out the dirty. Switch to clean only, put the dirty back to volume, engage the other three heads. I hope that makes sense. It's 6.15 a.m. here. Yeah, you need a Grady in order to do that, that badass way. Thanks Grady, big love to you. An extra question I wanted to put in that I got later after editing the AMA part and it's from git8 underline 4. Hello Tila, I've been following you for about two years now and I gotta thank you for all the content you put out and all the lessons, it really helps a lot. I also have some questions. Will you ever cover Dime's solo from the Born Under, a bad sound cover with Duck Pinnick or the entire song for that matter? There's just so many Dime related stuff that I probably want to cover prior to this one. The plan is to focus more on, on Pantera, maybe do some uh, streams and whatnot. But who knows, maybe one day. The second question, is there gonna be a ride for Dime next year in Hungary? Yes! And it's gonna take place on the 4th of January in Budapest. And I would highly recommend to all that can make it to come because it's gonna be a very special show since Cowboys has its 35th and Remetting the Steel has its 25th anniversary next year. We're gonna cover uh, a lot from that. And also it's uh, the 20th anniversary for Dime's passing. You know, that also makes it uh, more special. Some pretty cool guests. Yeah, it's just a, a fun celebration for Pantera and Dime. And then the third question will be, are you planning on releasing new music in the near future? Just seeing that you're the guitarist for Angskrit. So yeah, I got the answer. So with Angskrit, which is a Danish band, I've been involved with as a lead guitarist. I just love the guys, uh, how, how they write songs and have their own unique style. Flattered and humbled to be the part of this and maybe even contribute in the future, probably. Which I would be very happy and pleased to put uh, my stamp on it. But I would also want to keep in a way that's been going for them. I think it's a great thing uh, that, that they're doing, so I don't want to put too much as of right now. But we'll see. I, I really look forward to, to do anything with those guys. I just love them and the music. And regarding my own music, there is some stuff coming out this year. I am planning to put together more original contents and uh, musical contents in the future. In what shape and form, uh, we'll have to see, but there's stuff coming out for sure. Thanks for the question. From Alex G. Luke. Luque. Hi Attila, have you ever thought someone could steal these riffs and record them as their own? I feel there's a whole movement of people doing that and it's kind of scary. I, in all honesty, I do not worry about uh, people stealing my riffs. On one hand, it would be kind of also flattering if uh, people would do it. Of course, I wouldn't really be happy about it, but I mean, what can I really do? I have the, the rights for the songs, which I do. I came 
to a conclusion regarding this question that I simply have the, the faith in myself that uh, whatever I do, I have a lot of fun doing it. It may resonate with other people. I'm just really making it for myself. I think it transpires and it translates. So if somebody would steal it, he or she could put it out. But I don't know, at the end of the day, it would be very hard to replicate unless it's an AI, which is kind of worrying, but uh, you know, that's another question. But yeah, thanks for the question. From Chris Redding 7309 Great video. The part of regular people always messes me up. Haha. <laughs> With all those layers on that track for Ola, if you were playing it live in a one guitar band, which part would you actually play? The part you played in Riff Challenge video? I'm happy to hear that uh, it cleared something up for you. It's been messy for me too. And what you refer, I believe, is related to how I write for the Swala video, which I did in my last flow of Attila. It's a cool question because I've been in a situation situation of one guitarist in a band. The original songs have several layers of guitars and that's a part of being a touring musician or anyone who plays live. Figure out what's what, what works best with one guitar. You have to think of the drums, the, the vocals, everything has to be in its place and it's a, it's a cool creative process which I always enjoyed and uh, found a lot of fun doing it. Maybe it would be better if I would just go and show what I would do with this one. Let's do that. So the way I would approach this is that I would just, you know, go through my all the sections and riffs. Let's talk about the first part, the intro part. There's not any difference between the two the two main guitars. There's no question that I'm gonna just simply play the same stuff. The only thing cannot be replicated unless we use uh, samples or the the extra additional layers of clean guitars. This. So depending on the gig, there might be some uh, samples and if that's the case, of course we would add as a backup to make it sound bigger and just more interesting. But then the next part, that's the tricky one because there's the, the, the Q&A part between the two guitars. So let's solo these two. The notes are... That's one side with the melody and the other then answers with these two. So. This is the one that I pre-recorded. It goes something like this. Whereas the other <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, like the third for this, just an octave lower. So that's already a debate whether I want to go up here or maybe play like the thirds together. It's, it's a different color and it's kind of difficult to play live. This is also something that I would consider how difficult it is to pull it off. And another thing that I would probably do, this part with bending here above the nut, not only sounds but looks cool, maybe live I would play it like that. It's uh, more entertaining for people and for myself as well. So maybe I would play it like this. And not only for the entertainment part I would choose this, but it's also a cool jump from up here. And then come back here. The only thing that I don't really like about this way is the transition from here to here. It lacks something, so maybe I would add some slide, make it a little more interesting. Or. Something like this. I just experience with a little bit, but I always keep in mind the whole picture. It has to work good with the bass, it has to work good with the vocals. If there would be vocals and they would be in the same register, I would probably go lower or higher so that I don't fight with the singer. It always has to complement and it always depends on the context. I don't know, a lot of talk. 
yes. <gasps> and then comes the solo part, which is ob kind of obvious, I will play that. The only thing to consider are those extra harmonies, these for example. <laughs> Yeah, so there's not too much I could do with this. If I like the melody, I usually would follow the main line. And again, if there's samples, we could use that. Maybe not too much, just a little. Something that works better and builds up in a way that, that you know, that's good for, again, for uh, the whole musical context. And then the end is the same, like, I mean, in the sense that all, both sides of the guitars play the same. So there's not much question with that. That's how I would approach it. Okay, and the last question is from Vladandre6235. Can you make a video for the intro riff? I guess you're talking about regular people and that intro or main riff. Hmm. You know what? I just did. All right, so today I'm gonna show you the main riff of regular people. This is also another controversial riff, I believe. I've seen people playing it all over the place. So I'm gonna show you the way I hear it and I play it. For the demonstration part of the video, I tuned my guitar to 425 standard E, which is the original tuning. But for the lesson part, I tuned it back to 440 E, so it's easier to follow. We're gonna start with this galloping thing and the picking pattern is down, down, up, so. Very classic gallops. We do that on the open E string and then we pick the A8, pull off to the seven, so. And then we do down and down on the open E string, palm muted again, and then up on the seven. And instead of picking, it's actually a hammer on to the E8. This is where it gets serious. And after the hammer on, we're gonna pick the E5 and hammer on to the 6. So, so far. And this is kind of the basic pattern that we repeat. Very important and crucial part with this riff and the sound to achieve is to have a gate set up pretty intense so that these in-between rests are very articulate. Because there's not much time to do it the right way. It's a feel thing, but also it's a, a gear and setup thing. So you need a, uh, definitely need a noise gate for this one. So then the next group of notes would be again in between the gallops, palm mutes on the open E string. Starting from A7, pull off to the 5. So this is the first part. And then we continue, as we did before, down and down on the open E string. But now we go to the A5 and 6 with the hammer on. Okay, upstroke on the A5 and hammer on back to the E6. And then after the hammer on, down to the E1 and hammer on to the 3. This is pretty fast to play it articulate, it's kind of difficult. Second bar. One minor difference is that the first notes are not palm muted, the E notes, they're always open. Only the first time it's muted. We do a very similar to the first bar, it's just the order of the notes. Open E and go to A7 and then hammer to the 8 and then and after this hammer on from the A to the E string, go down to the E4 and we let it ring. Also pick that with a downstroke. So the third bar. And then we do the last bar, which is down, up, down, down, up, down. That's the picking pattern. And the notes are two open E, palm muted notes. And then first E5 with a power chord. And then six, three, one. In between two muted E notes, so. The 
down, up, down, down, up, down. And then we start over, but now again with an open E instead of a palm mute. Let's see the first round slowly. And then we repeat, but again, starting with an open E instead of a palm mute. Up to speed. I don't know about you guys, but uh, as of me, I really enjoy making these sightseeing videos in Budapest or where I live or wherever I go. I hope that you enjoy it. I can show some music behind. Let's see what I captured this week. home now we got a pretty late autumn I got some work to do see all, all the leaves I guess I got a lot in the garden so I gotta get rid of those yeah oh yeah oh yeah I cannot even see the way down <laughs> Man, I got some work to do. Ooh, yeah. What a beautiful day. Yet again. Yeah. Nice. Let's do this. Well, let's see. I know it's not perfect. Much more leaves to be fallen. But still, I managed to gather two bags. And now I have a clearer way. 
<laughs> going down. Better chance of not falling. Yeah. What a content! <laughs> Peace. This is the next morning. It's more than before! <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking about. Well, it is what it is, so let's keep on rolling. This was it for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's flow of Attila. If you got any questions for the next AMA, just make sure that you put them in the comment section down below. Also, I got a Patreon site, so if you want to support me and this channel to grow or want to get tabs and other exclusive contents, just make sure that you check out my Patreon link down below. Yeah, I guess that's about it. I'll see you soon. I wish you a fun day. Ciao.